Hi, Ilana Mercer here, author of a Paleo Libertarian column since 1999 and of books, the last of which is The Trump Revolution, The Donald's Creative Destruction, Deconstructed. Your thought of the day How does evidence against something become evidence for that very same thing? Plain evidence against the good health of Hillary Clinton has become, with the aid of the more functioning media, evidence for her stamina. She has a constitution of a bore, such as a fender on Fox News following Clinton's very public collapse at the 2016 9-11 memorial. She powered through it all, parroted the rest. Pneumonia blows over like the flu, was the consensus on MSNBC, as they collected affidavit after affidavit from their reporters to swear to how humid, crowded and uncomfortable it was for Hillary on that fateful day in New York. Probably nothing, said that no-good neurologist Sanjay Gupta at CNN, mere hours before the news of Clinton's pneumonia broke. How does a display of faltering health from Hillary become a reason to doubt the stamina of a man, Trump, who's like the Incredible Hulk? Like magic, Trump materializes at multiple events a day. He hops from Mexico to Louisiana and seems to be having fun at it all. His countenance seems to scream, give me more. Then there's the sexism angle. For that, I need some Dutch courage. How is it that we hold a female presidential candidate with pneumonia to a different standard than a male presidential candidate without pneumonia? Now, there's a no-brainer. How do we pivot from a real problem, the reality of Hillary's ill health, to have hailing her strength? Hillary's obsessively private. She's chaste rather than suspiciously ill. In this context, Trump, naturally, is said to be deceptive rather than manifestly robust and revved up with energy. How does a display of deplorability by Hillary Clinton, lumping in Her Highness's basket of deplorables millions of Americans in flyover country, become a ruse to put VP candidate Mike Pence on the rack and extract a confession from this mild-mannered man about the deplorability of a third unrelated party, David Duke. And how is the deplorable Hillary's list of thought crimes imputed to Trump supporters stand as evidence of anything other than a form of totalitarianism? And the American media pundit complex dare to talk about Russian authoritarianism? Finally, first she scoffs at the country, then she coughs all over it. So tell me, how does Hillary Clinton's dangerous decision to cough her way around the country rather than come clean about her infectious disease and quarantine herself show that at the very least Hillary's decision-making is profoundly flawed? Over and out.